In, in the quiet town of Riverside, California, a mystery was about to unfold that would baffle doctors and scientists alike. Picture this. It's an ordinary evening in the late winter of 1994. The local hospital is abuzz with the usual flurry of activity when Gloria Cecilia Ramirez, a woman in her 30s, is rushed into the emergency room. She's gravely ill, suffering from late-stage cervical cancer. But what should have been a routine admission quickly spirals into a terrifying ordeal. As doctors and nurses swarm around Ramirez, things start to go sideways. Medical staff begin falling like dominoes, collapsing, gasping for breath. Confusion reigns as the situation rapidly descends into chaos. The emergency room, a place of healing, turns into a scene straight out of a horror movie. It's not the sight of Ramirez that's causing this bizarre reaction. It's not her symptoms, nor her distress. No, it's something far more sinister. It's her very body, her blood that's causing the staff to buckle and faint. Exposure to her is like exposure to a toxic substance. Five of the people tending to Ramirez are so severely affected that they require hospitalization themselves. The rest are left shaken, bewildered, and grasping for answers. What could possibly cause such a strange and alarming reaction? This isn't a tale of a contagious disease or a virulent strain of virus. This is something else entirely. This is the story of the toxic lady, a woman whose very presence could seemingly poison those around her. In the midst of all this chaos and confusion, one thing becomes tragically clear. Gloria Ramirez, the woman at the heart of this medical mystery, is rapidly fading. Despite the best efforts of the medical staff, her condition deteriorates. Before the night was over, Ramirez would be dead, and five hospital workers would be hospitalized. In the wake of this bizarre incident, the hospital was in chaos. The usually sterile corridors of the medical facility were filled with confusion and fear. Gloria Ramirez, known later as the Toxic Lady, had just been admitted to the emergency room. She came in with late-stage cervical cancer, but her arrival had an unexpected and terrifying aftermath. Hospital workers who were exposed to her body and blood fell ill, one after another. Five of them, overcome by the inexplicable symptoms, required hospitalization themselves. The air was thick with the unknown, the staff reeling from the sudden turn of events. It was an ordinary day that morphed into an episode of a horror show, a mystery that was just beginning to unfold. Immediately theories began to circulate. Some whispered about an unknown pathogen, a deadly virus that had found its way into the hospital. Others speculated about a chemical contamination, a dangerous substance that had somehow infiltrated the emergency room. But none of these theories could explain the specificity of the incident. The fact that only those who came into contact with Gloria were affected. Meanwhile, the hospital administration was grappling with the fallout. They were faced with a medical mystery that threatened not just the staff's health, but also the institution's reputation. Every step they took was under the scrutiny of the public eye, their actions dissected and analyzed by a frightened community seeking answers. And at the center of it all was Gloria Ramirez, who had died shortly after arriving at the hospital. Her body was a silent enigma, a puzzle that needed to be solved. But as the hours ticked by, the mystery only deepened and the questions multiplied. What had happened in that emergency room? Why did the hospital workers fall ill? Was it a bizarre coincidence or was there something more sinister at play? The theories were many, the answers few. The hospital was a storm of speculation and fear, a whirlwind of uncertainty that refused to settle. And amidst the confusion and the chaos, one question loomed large, echoing through the hospital corridors and haunting everyone's thoughts. The question on everyone's lips, what had caused this strange event? As the dust settled, the focus shifted to finding an explanation. The confusion and fear that gripped the hospital that fateful night had to be untangled piece by piece. The investigation into the strange death of Gloria Ramirez began in earnest with all eyes trained on the peculiar circumstances that had led to such a terrifying incident. Initially, the incident was chalked up to mass hysteria, a psychological phenomenon where fear and stress spread through a group like wildfire. The theory suggested that the hospital staff, already on edge due to the mysterious symptoms exhibited by Gloria, had succumbed to a collective panic. This panic, in turn, was believed to have caused the symptoms they experienced, a sort of self-fulfilling prophecy of fear. However, as the investigation progressed, this theory began to lose ground. Gloria's medical history threw up a significant clue. She had been self-administering a substance known as dimethyl sulfoxide. 
This chemical, commonly used as an industrial solvent, had been found in Gloria's system. It was speculated that under the intense conditions of the hospital emergency room, this substance could have converted into a toxic compound. Could this have been the trigger for the bizarre symptoms experienced by the hospital staff? The theory of dimethyl sulfoxide was considered a breakthrough in the investigation. It provided a tangible chemical explanation for the incident, something that could be tested, analyzed, and proven. Yet it was not without its skeptics. Many questioned how such a reaction could occur so quickly and so violently. Others pointed out that the use of dimethyl sulfoxide was not uncommon and yet no similar incidents had occurred. But even with these theories, there were still more questions than answers. The investigation had begun to shed light on the mystery, but the puzzle was far from complete. The strange death of Gloria Ramirez was a riddle wrapped in an enigma, and the quest for the truth was only just beginning. Enter the theory of the toxic lady, a hypothesis that would turn the case on its head. What if the cause of the hospital staff's illness wasn't rooted in hysteria, but in the very blood running through Gloria Ramirez's veins? This was the question that sparked the development of the toxic lady theory, a theory that hinged on a common compound known as dimethyl sulfoxide. Dimethyl sulfoxide, or DMSO for short, is a substance often used as an industrial solvent, but it also has a more dubious reputation as a kind of DIY treatment for pain. It's not uncommon for folks in desperate situations to turn to unconventional remedies and the theory proposed that Gloria Ramirez might have been one such individual. Imagine, if you will, a woman in the throes of late-stage cervical cancer, seeking relief in a bottle of DMSO. This substance, absorbed into her bloodstream, would have lain dormant until her arrival in the emergency room. But then, something unexpected occurred. The DMSO in Ramirez's system was exposed to the oxygen-rich environment of the hospital, and, in a bizarre chemical twist, transformed into a toxic compound. This newly formed substance, a volatile sulfur compound, could have been the silent killer that struck down the hospital staff. As they administered CPR, drew blood and worked tirelessly to save Ramirez's life, they could have been unknowingly exposed to the toxic fumes emanating from her body. This theory seemed to offer a plausible explanation, but not everyone was convinced. Critics argued there were gaps in the theory, inconsistencies that couldn't be ignored. However, it remained the most accepted explanation for the strange events surrounding Gloria Ramirez, the woman who would forever be known as the Toxic Lady. As with any mystery, the case of Gloria Ramirez was not without its controversies. Despite the Livermore's theory presenting a plausible explanation, many found it hard to swallow. The idea of a woman's body producing a toxic substance potent enough to hospitalize five staff members was, to say the least, far-fetched for some. Critics argued that the theory was more science fiction than medical fact, raising doubts about its validity. As the controversy brewed, an independent autopsy was conducted on Ramirez's body, further muddying the waters. The results came in stark contrast to the original findings. They suggested that Ramirez had not been using dimethyl sulfoxide, contradicting the very foundation of the toxic lady theory. This bombshell left many questioning the official version of events. The independent autopsy also raised questions about Ramirez's cause of death. While the medical staff at the hospital had concluded that Ramirez succumbed to her late-stage cervical cancer, the independent autopsy was inconclusive. The cause of death was listed as undetermined, leaving room for speculation and controversy. As if the case wasn't complicated enough, doubts were cast on the mass hysteria explanation as well. Critics argued that mass hysteria would not lead to such severe physical symptoms, further challenging the official narrative. Each of these conflicting opinions added a new layer of intrigue to the case, turning it into a complex web of theories and speculations. The more people tried to untangle the mystery, the more tangled it seemed to get. The true cause of the bizarre events in that Riverside hospital remains shrouded in mystery. Was it a chemical reaction, mass hysteria, or something else entirely? Despite the numerous investigations and theories, the truth seems as elusive as ever. The mystery of Gloria Ramirez was far from solved. In the end, it was Livermore's chemical reaction theory that would gain the most acceptance. This theory, which seemed as though it was plucked right from the pages of a science fiction novel, suggested a chemical cocktail so peculiar it could only have been concocted under the most extraordinary circumstances. 
Livermore's theory proposed that Gloria Ramirez had been self-administering a substance called dimethyl sulfoxide, commonly known as DMSO. This is a powerful solvent often used as a home remedy for pain. The theory suggests that when the paramedics attempted to revive Ramirez using oxygen, the DMSO in her system would have converted into dimethyl sulfate, a potent and harmful chemical. Now here's where things get truly chilling. When the emergency room staff were exposed to Ramirez's blood, the dimethyl sulfate would have evaporated into the air, causing those who inhaled it to experience symptoms such as nausea, convulsions, and even paralysis. As terrifying as this theory may sound, it provided a plausible explanation for the bizarre symptoms experienced by the hospital staff that fateful night. Yet, despite its plausibility, Livermore's theory was not without controversy. Critics pointed out that the amount of DMSO needed to create a sufficient amount of dimethyl sulfate would have been significantly more than what Ramirez could have possibly administered to herself. Moreover, the rapid conversion of DMSO to dimethyl sulfate as proposed by Livermore is not typically observed in medical literature. Nevertheless, in the face of such a baffling mystery, Livermore's theory presented a semblance of understanding. It offered a scientific explanation to a situation that, at first glance, seemed to defy all logic and reason. Though it may not offer a definitive answer, Livermore's theory remains the most accepted explanation to date. For many, it provides a comforting sense of closure to a case that continues to baffle and intrigue us to this day. The case of Gloria Ramirez has left a lasting impact, raising questions about hospital safety and the dangers of self-medication. The incident that unfolded that fateful night in Riverside, California, was more than just an eerie tale. It was a wake-up call, a stark reminder of the potential dangers lurking within the confines of our own bodies and the risks we take when we tamper with them. Gloria's case transformed more than just headlines. It transformed hospital protocols across the nation. The fear of a repeat incident led to a re-evaluation of emergency room procedures with a heightened focus on safety measures. Nobody wanted to be the next Riverside. Personal protective equipment became a priority, and the handling of hazardous biological materials was scrutinized like never before. But the legacy of this case is not confined to the sterile walls of hospitals. It spilled over into our homes, into our everyday lives. The speculation that Gloria was self-administering dimethyl sulfoxide, a substance that may have turned toxic within her body, raised red flags about the risks of self-medication. It served as a grim reminder that our bodies are complex machines, not to be trifled with by unqualified hands. Beyond the tangible changes, Gloria's story continues to grip the public's imagination. It's become a part of our cultural consciousness, a chilling tale whispered in the corners of the internet and explored in countless articles, documentaries, and podcasts. It's a story that continues to captivate, to baffle, and to warn us of the dangers that can lurk in the most ordinary places. The case of Gloria Ramirez serves as a chilling reminder of the mysteries that can lurk in the most unexpected places. As we delve into the unknown, we must remember to tread with caution, for the ordinary can quickly become extraordinary and the familiar can suddenly turn frighteningly unfamiliar. If you enjoyed this strange mystery, then check out our next video about the mystery vanishing of Muara Murray. There's still no leads on this case, so give this a click now.